Now you can begin living successfully. Bob Keaton hosts a conversation with pioneers in the areas of health and personal growth. Stay tuned for new options that can make work, relationships, and money flow into a successful life. Here's your host, Bob Keaton. I'm Bob Keaton. You're listening to Living Successfully. In San Francisco, I am with Byron Katie. You say Katie is good enough as a name to call you. Absolutely. And names probably are a good place for us to start because your life did a almost 180 degree change of its own and I bet your names was part of that wasn't it? Yes I didn't relate to any name my birth certificate says Byron Kathleen and in that moment it didn't quite ring true Mm -hmm. it was as though it wasn't personal that they were naming someone else not me and it was okay I read the book, uh, A Cry in the Desert. It looked like there was just this sudden shift that took place. And I wonder if you can talk about that a little bit and and how your identity changed. Well, a woman went to sleep on the floor. I was in a halfway house. And the woman, Byron Katie, went to sleep. She slept on the floor. And there was a moment she opened her eyes, like anyone would open their eyes and get up and begin the day. But what opened its eyes was not Byron Katie. What opened its eyes was the word I call, uh, the word I would use for it is awareness. Awareness was born. And, and at that point, I was also unrecognizable to my children and family. And, and uh, the body was the same. The face was the same. And, and yet, unrecognizable. And I was a rageaholic, so my children, you know, lived in a state where they were afraid I I would come back like the old mom and and, um, begin to trust that, no, they would just keep this one. Mm. So their fear was that the person they knew could return at any moment, huh? Yes, and that lasted for several years, two or three years, and they began to trust. And I think they entered what I call the work of Byron Katie. Two of them entered that. And so they have a lot of peace, and um, everything is as it should be. You see the world that way, though, don't you? That everything is as it should be. Yes. The way I see the world that way is because it is what it is. It is as it should be because it is. I mean, it doesn't matter how we argue with that. That's... It goes on. It goes on perfectly. It's a perfect tapestry. There are no errors, no mistakes in my experience. And I have come to love that. I've come to love that dearly. I call it on God. Leaves you more at peace, I suppose, than most people. But you know, on the other hand, I would think that a lot of folks would say, well, then what's the point of living? What's the purpose in being here if we don't have crusades and causes, if we can't right the wrongs? If everything is perfect the way it is, why live? Uh, Well, it's not my experience. You know, I woke up, awareness lived. And I don't know, I have thousands and thousands of friends now, and it's as though we're all stepping into the same experience. It's not just for special people now. You do have thousands of friends, and people, well, like even myself, seek you out for lots of things. Healing is one of those, isn't it? Well, that's what I hear. What I know is we step into the, the world of joy, really, the world of freedom. Could you tell me a little bit about that? You call it the work, the technology of freedom. What is that about? Ah, well, it was my first experience on the floor, and I uh, opened my eyes, and every thought appeared just like it does in any human, just like it had for 43 years in my life prior to that. But I could see at the same time that none of it was true. It was as though everything appearing within me, like on on my children are supposed to respect me. I want my children to love me. All of this, it was, I could see that it absolutely was not true, that I, I wanted their freedom for them, that they would love who they love and respect who they respect. And I came to see that when I had the thought, I want them to love me or care about me, that I would feel this unsettling inside of me. It would be like a knot. And then I could see that prior to that concept appearing, prior to that thought appearing, that there was peace. 
So that's the entire four questions, what I call the four questions and turnaround. It's the entire inquiry, and it was known in a moment. It took me a while to verbalize it or get the words to express it as inquiry. As clumsy as it is, many people are falling into it. Hmm. As clumsy as it is. That little book that I've read, it's fairly simple work, but most of us don't ever think about doing it. And you say there's basically four questions, right? Yes. Would you be willing to talk about what those are? Yes, let's play. Yeah, <laughs> let's, I'd like let's, that. Let's do. So what is not okay in the world? What do humans say is not okay in the world? Well, let's take, uh, the first word comes to mind is crime, when people take something from another that's not theirs. You yes. know, crimes like that. Yes. So people are not supposed to steal. Is it true? What's the reality of it? Do they? Do people steal? Yes. My perception is, yes, that probably is the case, yeah. And have you ever stolen? I'm sure that I have, yes. So people steal. So if I think people are not supposed to steal, I'm opposing what is. I'm opposing reality. You've stolen. Opposing I've stolen. Opposing myself, in other words. Opposing yourself. The second question is, can you really know that it's true that people are not supposed to steal? No, I know that's a belief. I know that's something that I've heard. That's something I've been taught. Yeah, yeah. And it absolutely opposes what we do in the story of the world. So I guess that means I've, what I've been taught and what I've done are in conflict. Yes, and the only pain on the planet is confusion, is what I have found. So, uh, what do you get for holding the belief we're not supposed to steal? What do you get inside of you? How do you treat people when you attach to that story and they continue to steal? You read it in the newspaper. How does it feel inside of you when you attach to the story we're not supposed to steal? Now, when you say when I attach to the story, what do you mean? When I have uh, an the emotional thought. attachment to it or some judgment about it? Yeah, the thought, and you really believe people are not supposed to steal. And they do. How does that Conflict. feel inside? Uh, Conflict. I feel conflicted, yeah. yeah. And can you see a reason to drop the story that would lie, argue with reality, argue with what is? Can you see a reason to drop the story people are not supposed to steal? And I don't ever ask that people drop the story. Just can you see a reason to? Yeah, and yet it looks like if I do that, then chaos will break out. You know, that, that everyone will be stealing from everyone else. It'll be a terrible place. I can't do that. I've got to maintain my position and my beliefs. That's what comes up very naturally. Yes. So what you're telling me is that war works. That pain and suffering and war are the ammunition to end war. That's like saying that let's drop all the bombs, let's have peace on earth as long as we have the biggest bomb. <laughs> and that's what we're living. Yeah. Wow, it does look that way. Yeah. So can you see one good reason to keep the story people are not supposed to steal that is not stressful? One good reason to keep the story that is not stressful within you. But again, I'm not asking you to give up the story. What I like to say is that story is our God. That's why we don't have this contact with God. We're worshiping these concepts. People are not supposed to steal. And they have been doing it since, you know, one story is since Eve bit the apple. She took something that she wasn't supposed to take. So, you know, when is it going to end? It ends within you. You're the one. I like to say you're the one you've been waiting for. It makes perfect sense. So, Absolutely. So, sweetheart, one good reason to keep the story that is not stressful? I'm thinking. And I'm having trouble with that. Because stress, it seems like, is what perpetuates things. It seems like we need to have stress. We need to have some tension between us just to know we're alive. It keeps things world. going. Yes. It keeps things going. It keeps going. the game going. Yes. But it keeps ambition going, and, and it keeps exactly. progress going. Can you really know that that's true? Can you really know that love doesn't work? That peace isn't the way? You're listening to Byron Katie. This is Living Successfully, and I'm Bob Keaton. <laughs>